don't know what chemical this is. That's a pretty high uh, boiling point. It is. But for whatever it is, it doesn't matter. That's what it is. Okay? Yep. And um, right. I think that's it. That's it for problems. We've got a couple more little conceptual things. Yeah. This is a very important concept here. Oh, yeah. Now, if you have an element, what's an element? An element is uh, like something from the periodic table, like carbon, oxygen, carbon. Carbon. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does it mean when I say standard state? Standard state is in the uh, state that it's in at uh, standard conditions. What are standard conditions? Well, it's different than STP. Actually, it's actually room temperature in one atmosphere. For some strange reason, I don't know why that's different, but I do actually. Well, why is it? So, if you're at standard conditions in a thermodynamic world, it is one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. And you say, well, I've learned about STP, and it was one atmosphere and zero Celsius. Is that just gas law physicists like to work outside in the cold? And That's exactly right. Actually, <laughs> well, not actually, but the point was is the thermodynamic chemist is a different branch of chemistry than the people who study gas laws. And um, actually, you used to do gas laws, and they kept the standard temperature pressure was 25 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. And then some point along the line, they said, oh, zero would be easier for everybody, so they switched everything to zero degrees. This is in the 1950s or 60s. And then, uh, but the thermodynamicists, they said, we are not going to STP being zero degrees Celsius. So, phooey on you. Phooey on you. All right. So, but <laughs> carbon, for example, is a solid at yep. room temperature yep. at 25 Celsius. So, therefore, it's in its standard state. And the value of delta H for this, and actually, we call it the delta H F. Zero. Oh, yeah, that. Would be zero. Zero. Kilojoules per mole. Always, if you have an element in its standard form, it's zero kilojoules per mole. And by the way, that little zero right here, this little uh, looks like a degree sign mm -hmm. or naught or whatever you want to call it, is um, means at standard, standard conditions, meaning right. one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. So yeah. if I have fluorine gas, now I would write F2. Right, because that's how it exists. It doesn't exist as F, it's F2. Delta H for this is zero. zero. Actually, delta H naught. Or if I have, um, uh, I don't know, uranium. Now let's take mercury. Oh, yeah. Mercury is in this room would be a liquid, liquid. if I had some. You can't have it. It's illegal. We have and maybe not this room. It's kind of cold in here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, what would delta H not be? Uh, zero. Zero. What about this one? How about um, NH3 gas? Mm -hmm. So that would be equal to zero, too, right? Um, that's not an element. Oh, you're right. You see, it's not an element, so it is a compound. Right, so, so that one we're going to have to look up in the back of the book, You're gonna find in the it. appendix. Yeah, usually you'll find a table and have a list of this. We do not know this number. Yep. We could look it up and find yep. it if we wanted to. By the way, on the AP test, they, it, it, if delta H is supposed to be zero because it's an element, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to assume you yeah. know that. And some people go, I don't have enough information to solve the problem. Yes, you do. It's zero. Something's going to be zero if you don't have enough information. So the AP test look. assumes you know this answer. If yes. you do not know this answer, then you're going to really have a hard time. Yep. You know, when you're doing it in class, you're going to look it up in the book and say, well, it's zero. Yeah. Because you're going to have the book and the table. But in the AP test, they do not give you the table. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So watch that. All right. Let's talk ourselves through this whole process yep. here. This is key. This this is very important. If you understand this, you're, you're light years ahead. Okay. So let's uh, talk about delta H and delta S. Let's do uh, positive, positive. I don't know. There's lots of choices first. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean, positive, positive? Positive means it's uh, endothermic. So endo. And? And more disorder. More disorder. Yeah, so we're putting heat in, and it's getting messier, basically. Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, is this going kind of, to happen, Mr. Sams? Um, I'm going to say let's look at the delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So let's go back to our other screen here, where we have just a place to write. So if delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Mm -hmm. And this value is positive. Yes. And this value is positive. Now the temperature, what's that going to be? Positive or negative? Uh, that's always going to be positive because we're dealing with Kelvin temperatures. Here. So it's, temperature is always positive right. because it's a Kelvin temperature scale. Yep. Remember that. So if I take a positive number minus a positive number, uh -huh. what do you get? It depends on which side's bigger. That's right. You see, because sometimes it can be positive or negative. So mm -hmm. if this is the big side and this is small, and this is going to be dependent upon temperature, by the way, because delta S is always smaller than delta H. So if you have a big temperature, then this will be spontaneous. But yeah. if you have a small temperature, it will not. So when I say small, I'm talking about small and big. The, 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 the only one that's going to change, frankly, guys, right. is the T here. And so if this is big and this is small, then you get a positive number. And that's not spontaneous. And it's not spontaneous, because positive is not spontaneous. So right. you get small here and big here, and the way to get big here is actually to have a higher high temperature. temperature, then this will be negative. Right. 
Okay, so if we go back to our screen here, so if this is true here, this can be either Yep. It'll be positive or negative. Right. It'll be uh, And this will be spontaneous. It'll be spontaneous at high temperatures. At high temperatures. Yeah. The example we just talked about one minute ago, if I brought some ice in from outside. Yep. It is spontaneous at high temperatures. At high temperatures. Now, what does that mean high though? Uh, it depends it's not that, on the number. It's not that hot in here. No, no. It, it, it just depends on the numerical values of delta H and delta S, and it's going to vary from problem to problem. Yeah, it's important to understand. So it's kind of a relative term, but yes. just know that if something's not spontaneous and you have a plus plus for H and S, if you increase the temperature beyond a certain point, it will become spontaneous. That's correct. All right, let's do negative negative. Yeah. Now, by the way, negative would be exothermic. Yep. And this would be uh, order. order. I'll just write order. Okay. And so now if we go back to our other chart here, so if we say, I'll do it again, maybe, yeah. delta G equals delta H. You should write this down, I think, on, on, on your paper somewhere, guys, not just fill out that chart. Yeah. And so if this is negative and this is negative, mm -hmm. okay, remember that temperature is positive. Always. Okay, so if this is, this is negative and you mm -hmm. subtract a negative minus, negative minus a negative answer is like negative uh, plus, plus a positive. A positive. So if you have a high, so let me think about this. So this is, if this is big and this is small, but this is plus a negative. It's minus a negative. Minus a negative. So it's plus a positive. So it's spontaneous. If and that's big and that's small, then delta G is negative. And this is spontaneous. And if yes. this is small and this is big, then no, it's, this, not. it's not spontaneous. So again, this one depends. Now this time, it's the opposite. Yeah. So the... The positive positive, it's spontaneous at high temperatures. The negative negative, it's spontaneous at low temperatures. So this is spontaneous at low temperatures. And actually, a good example of that is one I talked about just a bit ago, and that is the stalactite stalagmite here. This is spontaneous at low temperatures. Okay, but it's getting more ordered, mm -hmm. hence the negative value of the delta S. Right. And uh, the delta H is negative, yeah, because it's getting the reason because it's going to lower energy. That's actually why it occurs. Okay, now the other two are easy actually. If yep. we do positive and negative, okay, positive of course is endo, and this is order. So if you're getting more lower energy, and no, yeah, 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 lower energy and more order. If you go back to our mathematical equation, all right, delta G is delta H. Minus T delta S. Did I do positive, positive? Uh, it's positive and negative. Positive, negative. Positive, negative. Yep. If you take a positive number minus, minus a, negative. a negative number, it's That's plus a positive. Plus a positive, so that will always be delta G positive, meaning non spontaneous. There are no examples. It will always be positive. There's no either or, and it will not happen. It is not spontaneous. So this is something that's not favored in the universe. Right. If you think about it, you're putting energy in both ways. You're putting energy in in terms of delta H, which is your heat, and you're putting energy in in terms of organizing it. So, yeah, you're not getting anything out. It's not going to happen on its own. Exothermic, heat's going out, and it's getting more disordered. It's messy. Those things are the things, uh, the way things tend to go in the universe. So this, I'm going to expect to be spontaneous. All right, so if I've got delta H and T delta S, so if it's... Uh, Negative, negative here and positive, positive here. A negative minus a positive will always, always be, be negative. a negative. So this will always be negative, which means it will always be spontaneous. spontaneous. All right. Now you can think about it mathematically by looking at these uh, things right here, and that's that's easy to do, yep. right? But I also want you guys to think about this conceptually. The universe favors. Write this down, guys. What does it favor? There's things going to low energy. Delta so H negative. negative. And things getting more disordered. Delta S positive. So, so if those both happen in conjunction, it's going to be spontaneous. Yeah, if, the, if you've, got, you've got two factors. If they both work together, it's always spontaneous. If they both work against you, never, never. spontaneous. And if one's working for you and one's working against you, Depends that's on the, the positive positive or the negative negative one, then you have... To think about it, it depends on the temperature, yep. like the ice melting or the, or the stalactite forming or whatever. Um, it depends upon uh, those factors. Yeah. So um, 
that hopefully it's, it, this is very important to understand this from a conceptual perspective. That on the AP test, it's actually more important to understand this conceptually than mathematically. Mm -hmm. The second podcast is about the mathematics, and um, so That's it. Um, yeah, so. I change the color and we can uh, do smiley faces or something like that. And I can talk in ridiculous accents again. I'll get you spiked hair. Like Mr. Berkman does. You must talk with a funny voice so that you can be stupid. I don't know. Or just silly. Not stupid. I'm not stu I hope I'm not stupid. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right. We will see you Bye. in the internet land or possibly, most likely, in our class. And then we can really uh, hassle you. Yeah. So make sure that you always write your charges, Lee. Write the I know you didn't write that charge. Mm. All right. Don't forget positive and negatively. I know. I know you. You're mm -hmm. a boy, Lee. Sometimes he doesn't always listen. So, all right. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. F10? I think it's F10. Yeah.